If you think there's nothing to do in Newcastle and Lawrence County, then think again. Always stay connected to NCTV 45 to receive the information on events going on in and around the area on a daily basis. Programs to view are Newswatch, The Morning Show, and Community Happenings. NCTV 45 takes pride in bringing you the event and organization info that you want. NCTV 45 is the number one media source locally. NCTV 45, anytime on your time. Entrusting your loved one to a funeral director is a very personal and emotional decision. The funeral director you choose must understand the importance of the decision you have made. When you call the William and Roger DiCarbo Funeral Home, I recognize what a privilege it is to be chosen at your time of need. We will provide you and your family with the best service possible, with sincerity and compassion. The William and Roger DiCarbo Funeral Home, family owned and operated since 1941. Come dine with us, come dine, come dine today. If you could use some real good food, there's a place not far away. If you could use a drink or two, or a place to go and play, come to Gallows Italian Villa today. Simple elegance in a majestic setting. Yes, right here in downtown Newcastle. Minutes away from shopping. Seconds from a gas station. And let's not forget pastries, a restaurant, and oh yes, the schools. The majestic for that majestic lifestyle right in the greatest castle Newcastle come by and take a look 724-658-5900 Chuck Tanner would be proud of the restaurant that bears his name Chuck Tanner's restaurant owned and operated by the Papazikas family would love for you to be part of a Newcastle tradition come enjoy the great breakfast super lunch and second to none dinner choices from their Italian Mediterranean and American cuisine you can relax with a wonderful atmosphere and something from the bar if you're planning an event ask about their banquet facility Tanner's restaurant is located at 2305 Wilmington Road in Ushanic Township call 7 Pleasant good afternoon, uh, very early evening, and uh, I thought I'd come uh, with the good news. Uh, first of all, sunshine in Newcastle and 56 degrees. And here you go um, as we get to the stories making their way today in Newcastle, PA. Uh, the Department of Health released its figures and um, they were very favorable. Uh, 885 of the cases had gone down and um, we're going to get to that. I want to just clear up a couple things. Uh, New Visions has been responsible and uh, for the downtown, uh, make, putting the flowers up and uh, what have you. Now, um, they are looking for volunteers and donations and um, I uh, 
strongly recommend this because they did such a nice job uh, the whole time. And, uh, you know, when our downtown looks good, everything looks good. They've planted flowers around the diamond. They've uh, done such a wonderful job with so many things that um, I wanted to recognize them. For, first off, letting you know, and um, uh, Tuesday, it's hashtag Giving Tuesday. And uh, that's Tuesday, May 5th. So, um, and they have somebody that will double the donations. Greenville comes in with their Monday updates. And uh, there is a PA career link. There is a COVID-19 job portal for individuals. You can use this site to see immediate openings. Uh, unemployment, uh, ha pandemic assistance program, and it provides, as my monitor jumped, I'm sorry. Provides benefits ranging from 195 to $572 for 90, for 39 weeks, qualifying individuals unable to work due to COVID-19. Payments will be backdated to January 27th. As um, we roll on with Newswatch, Governor Wolf calls for a mandated race and ethnicity data collection. Uh, I don't really know if, if this is a, they, they want, if you go to the hospital, they, they want it checked on what ethnicity you are. And uh, I don't think that they're allowed to do that. Despite a mandate by Secretary Rachel Levine, 69% of the race data is still unreported and there's little or no data when it comes to ethnicity, because it's optional. Um, as they continue to somehow don't think that this stuff has any law ranging things about it. Now, um, geez, I, I don't even know how else to put it. Um, but there are laws, and you can't break the laws. Uh, we fought the Civil War a long time ago, and uh, states do not have the right to make their own laws. And I realize, and I'm going to give you a little Pennsylvania history. We are a commonwealth, and there are some things that are some still on the books that are obscure from when William Penn got the charter and he was governor of this great state. England isn't in charge anymore. Here we go. The good news. 885 positives statewide. 4250. So that is a sharp decrease down 300 from yester and then down another 300 so we've had two days of 300 case decreases and with that of as we go down to the map and uh, we show you as I'm looking for the the map, and they uh, they must have uh, taken it out. Lawrence County at 63. Now let me tell you what that means. On the 16th of April, we had 55 cases. The 16th was a Thursday. We're within three days of having. 
eight active cases by our calculations, given that people get better in two weeks. Mercer County, 65. I had them at 55 on that day, uh, at the 16th. They will be down to 10 cases by my calculations. Now, while Dr. Rachel Levine isn't tracking who gets better, she's worried if you eat spaghetti in the afternoon, okay, the fact is people are getting better. The fact is this isn't an airborne illness. That's what they said. You have to be in somebody's presence, have some kind of contact, touch your ears, face, nose, mouth, in order to develop the virus. I'm starting to be a little skeptical of what's going on here. As uh, we take a look at the way they've broken down the cases and um, done this uh, with this news from the Department of Health. Now, here's the other interesting thing that it is going on. As we look at the map, and they have really changed the map. Matter of fact, they've changed their whole website to um, not show any map and uh, that's that's kind of concerning because the map a breakdown by county click here to and uh, they've done away with the maps it's a good thing folks that we're keeping track it's a good thing and and Governor Wolf says this is going to be a data-driven reopening standard. Every time I try to give the guy a little credit, he disappoints me. Uh, that's not the way to do it, Governor. And uh, he better get, keep a, a real eye on Rachel Levine because... In my humble opinion, I don't believe, and wait, here comes a map. I don't believe that Rachel totally understands how this is supposed to work. Uh, here's the clickable view by county, and then they have a view by zip code. Okay. By county, 63. Mercer, 65. When we switch to zip code, we find that the 16101 has gone up to the 19. So there is an increase. The Elwood zip code has remained at 16. Newcastle zip code, 19. Neshanic zip code. And now they're possibles, zero. That's uh, the Wilmington. Excuse me, Neshanic, 11. So 16, 19 is 35. And 11 is 46 as uh, that stumbled up. But she hasn't tracked who's gotten well. So um, there you go. As uh, we give you that view by, by the zip code. Let's go Crawford County, 19. Venango County, 7. Erie County, 81. 
So still very, very um, shy of the numbers across the top. Uh, really showing good news as uh, there seems to be, uh, and this was the old map, and uh, let's see if uh, when we collapse this, see how they took out the colors? They just, uh, they removed all of that, and that's very unfortunate. Uh, the, the new map is colored all red, and with it being colored all red, you have to really dig into the numbers, and we've been keeping a box score now. And since we're available any time on your time, and since I put those other maps up there, you can go back and really analyze the data that's there. And with it, you'll find that even though we've gotten, and they're saying that number, and I, 63, April 16th, we had 55 cases. It'll be two weeks on Thursday and that does not count the deceased members, so it backs us down to eight. As my, you know, Mike Kelly, two weeks to get better, two week quarantine. So you have to assume that they're saying you're gonna get better in two weeks. And with that, that's where that number is. Very disappointed in the governor for changing some of those things around that uh, and I really think that the Secretary of Health this is above her pay grade in the way the, way the, the guy in New Jersey says it um, Wolf administration issues guidance on construction and industry it's not an airborne illness uh, that's what we were told in the very beginning. And if you changed your mind, come out with a press release and say, Oh, I changed my mind. It's an airborne illness. I still say with 0.0068%, you can't go out into the parking lot, take a deep breath of air. You're going to get some pollen. You're going to get some dust. But I don't believe you're going to get COVID-19. Just my opinion. The Wolf Administration regionalizes COVID-19 testing work for supporting Pennsylvania's food supply. I get this because those packing houses and everything in the eastern part of the state, they probably need help trying to figure out uh exactly who has COVID and with that the stores that are there it might be a, a great protection for them if they have the masks on but I don't see it with customers unless you got somebody that comes in there tremendously sick now um, earlier today we made some phone calls based on uh, Mike Kelly's town hall meeting. And uh, it was kind of like a really great checkup on what was going on with Mike. Great guy, and I believe him. But I wanted to know kind of like personally how some of this was going down. When we called it the SBA, and then they turn you over to their customer service department, what we found out was this. It's four or five weeks 
from when you turned in the application. It was approved on the 29th, and that was that split week with March and April. For those that filled out the disaster loan, if you go to Friday, April 3rd, okay, get an email back, you're looking at the 1st, May 1st, or the beginning of next week, middle of next week to the end of next week, sometime next week, you'll get it. And if they put it in the mail, you might get it the week after. Little humor here. I went out, wasn't getting my mail again, got a post office box, spent the 50 bucks, and now the mail's coming down to the office. So, just goes to show you the type of organization that we have. Now, um, with this, that was on the SBA stuff. As we took a look at unemployment, from what was said at the town hall meeting, the, the system has been fixed and they are looking at a six week kind of lag time. And I can only put that together because March 12th, 13th, gentleman said he had turned it in. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. Nothing was done because the system was old, failed, and they couldn't do anything with it. So um, that in our investigation of the SBA loans and the unemployment. The site crashed for independent contractors. I believe it's back up. And the PP, the payroll protection plan, you have to go through one of the banks and good luck with that. Now, as you know, the election has been moved to Tuesday, June 2nd. Mail-in ballots are available. If you have questions or want to receive a mail-in ballot, 877-VOTES-PA is the number you can call. Now, the election office must receive an online of your county election office by Tuesday. They must receive the, the request for Tuesday, the 26th at 5 p.m. Once you receive the ballot in the mail, you have until 8 p.m. on Tuesday, June 2nd to turn it in. Why he wrote this, I don't know. But Governor Wolf, who sometimes chokes me out just talking about him, he recommends the voters apply for a mail-in ballot and do it. Now, once again, I believe he's talking about eastern Pennsylvania. as there's where a bulk at one point it was 85 percent then when I looked at it again we were at one percent of the total just a little while ago and now as theirs starts to come down ours really starts to come down so he recommends a mail-in ballot and that uh, being his recommendation who knows why. So, remember this little thing called Act 47? And then we approved long before, 
Long before this uh, COVID thing started, we approved uh, a home rule commission here in the city of Newcastle. Well, notice is hereby given that the Home Rule Charter Government Study Commission will hold meetings on the following dates. 6 p.m. City Council Chambers. However, please note that due to COVID-19, stay at home in place restrictions, meetings will be held virtually until the order is lifted. Information to contact and view the virtual meetings will be available on the city's website. That from Sue Linville. And, uh, well, Newswatch, giving you all you need to know and a little bit more as uh, we sail through and um, get you up to date on uh, exactly what's going on. And uh, here is uh, a friend, uh, and uh, I'll... Uh, I'll invite him in. Uh, so, I have a special guest coming. And uh, we're going to have uh, that. Now, that's going to be a surprise. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, give that away. For those watching on uh, their smart TV or anything, but um, we'll get and uh, do that right after we switch over and uh, go to sports. Now, don't have a bird. We're going to go through the sports rather quickly because, okay, uh, we got a lot more to get to here from the state so um, hang in there don't go away and uh, we'll see you back in a flash Remem oh, remember too the sports corner is done independently so you can watch the whole game not just me fast forwarding through it we'll be right back the Cedars Restaurant in Newcastle wants you to indulge in the food from their pleasing menu. The Cedars features Mediterranean, pub food, Middle Eastern cuisine, and so much more. They're open every day, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Call the Cedars on the east side at 827 Addis Street, Newcastle. Seven quarter and. Uh... Hello, friends, and it's Los Amigos. Uh, let me tell you what, great food. Whether you get the chimichangas, enchiladas, tacos, whatever you get, you're going to love them. The nice, friendly atmosphere. Stop by. Tell them NCTV45 sent you. It's Los Amigos sponsoring this program. Buongiorno! Yes, it's two fat guys in an oven with their great Italian pastries, bread, pizzas, pizza, sandwiches, 
everything you could imagine at two fat guys in an oven. They're great for lunch, great for take home, and great for any time. You just want to get away and get something to eat, get that cup of coffee and that great treat. Two fat guys in the oven, give them a try. Hey, we're back, and outside, a beautiful sunny 56 degrees, and uh, we'll take it as uh, we get, and uh, look towards everything else going on here. Now, I'm going to give that to my son. Go ahead, answer out there. And uh, we're going to get back to the news. And um, a special, and this is very important, from the uh, Red Cross. And, uh, you know, at this time, the American Red Cross needs your help. There, because of this pandemic, there's a huge blood shortage. And everybody in our listening area is stepping up. This is your chance to step up. And uh, here is, or here are, the places. May 5th. B.F. Jones Memorial Library, okay, El Equipa from 11 to 4. May 6th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. The American Legion, post 720, 70th Veterans Road in Knock. And uh, May 8th, Sharpsville, BFW 6404, 215 Walnut Street, Sharpsville, PA. Also, in New Wilmington at the Presbyterian Church, 229 South Market Street, they'll be having theirs May 11th from 1.30 to 5.30. May 12th from 10 to 2.30 at the Liberal Arts Performing Alumni Hall in Lincoln Park in Midland. May 14th, 11 to 4, East Bain Street, Presbyterian Church, Grove City. May 15th, Rosie Schneider Family YMCA, Cranberry Township, 2 to 7. And May 18th, from 1 to 6.30, Jerusalem Christian Church, and that's 560 Donation Road, as uh, very important to uh, understand those folks and blood. Now, um, we're going to take, well, you know what? I want to give you one more thing uh, that you probably got to know. You know, a lot of people get upset at, and with a lot of the things going on. And I, Hey, look, I understand that. I, I give you an emotional get out there. But you got to keep it all in check. If you're having a problem keeping in health, all in check. Governor Wolf's mental health support is vital and available amid the strain of COVID-19. He recommends, and he said this on the air, and talking to a friend and uh, making sure that everything's okay, call people, don't 
you could still use the phone, you know, even with your mask on. PA211, 1-800-273-TALK is available. Disaster Distress Hotline, 800-985-5990. Get Help for Substance Abuse Disorder, 800 662 help and uh, PA 211 they'll probably be able to help you also so make sure you do that 76 percent folks you're doing a well of a job making sure that you tell a friend and a friend tells a friend about NCTV 45 now let's take a look at weather and uh, here you go. Visibility 10 miles. We don't have that wind chill anymore. 56 degrees. Humidity 40%. Wind speeds north to 15. Gusting to 18 miles an hour. Barometric pressure. The amount of water that the, it holds. 30.14. That's the barometric pressure. And... 2.32. Now, with all of that, here's your radar from Cleveland clear. Don't get too excited, though. Pittsburgh radar clear. Now, uh, we're going to do this right in the middle of the weather forecast. I'm going to have a person sit right down behind the radar. And we'll click this button, and everybody give them a warm hello. What? You want to sit here? Right here. What? And here you go. I can't the see man, my face. The man, just sit down. All right. Just, the, the man, here he is. Is this? There you go. Mr. Dan <laughs> Avenite, live in, in studio. We're, we're here with the... Angela, for, my, these aren't sunglasses. This is actually transition lenses, so they'll clear up in a second. But look at this. This is, so. This is where the magic happens. This is it. This, this is, is there it. Different, is there another chair? And I'll you, sit next. Uh, to you. Just I'm fine. Okay. They've seen my face. How you been? I've been good. I've been good. I've been busy, which is a good thing, right? Yeah, you, look at hey. that face. I haven't seen you. How how long's it been? I don't. I don't have Facebook. I don't go on. Yeah. Well, you know what. Uh, I have to say, I, I didn't start out liking Tucker, Tucker Carlson, but his groupthink thing has really hit home because there are people that like to do that and bully. And it, I always say, if you don't agree with somebody, you don't have to watch it. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, we've been tackling the COVID crisis uh -huh. and uh, keeping our little box score. And uh, other than that, Aaron Cook in the castle. We got tapes. We had a virtual basketball game going on for March Madness. How'd that go? Well, it's going good, but we had to get the 8 millimeter fixed. Um, one of the guys that gave me some of the tapes we were playing, and I don't know if you knew this, but I coached. I, coached, I, did, I didn't know that. Yeah, I coached basketball over at St. Mary's. and uh, How long did you do that for when you started? I started all the way back in 1983. After graduating from Duquesne, and I, I did a walk-on down there. Mm -hmm. And then I tutored the basketball team. Basketball is a regular, reg, really rigorous schedule for those college kids playing because you're constantly moving. Yeah. Uh, came back and coached. And um, Harry Toscano's son, Brian Toscano, played for me and ended up getting a scholarship to Pitt. Oh, wow. So, so what do you like doing more? You like the, the teaching? You like the, the advertising? Or the, this, you like this, the news? At, or, do you like, or do you like the coaching? What, what do you prefer? Like if you had to do like let's say if I had to pick one, let's say money doesn't matter, you could do whatever you want. What would 
what would you what would Angelo Parada be doing right now? That's interesting because I coached football, I coached basketball, and um, I taught, as you know. Yeah. And then. Did I ever have you for a class? Yeah, I, yeah. you may have. Yeah. Um, it, I, it, it, you know, and it, it's like I enjoy things inside of things. Uh, I still am very partial to hurricane football. To hurricane football, specifically hurricane yeah. football. Yeah, or, or Friday night. I um, when my son wasn't playing, in order to not travel, I always made sure I was at a Friday night game, whether it was Union, Laurel, Shannon, you know, wherever it was. So I'm very partial to that time of the year. I just enjoy going out, watching a football game, and that's that's really really big. You think football's gonna? You think you think sports are gonna pick back up? Where do you think we're gonna leave off now? You know, Dan, that's an interesting question because what the Secretary of Health didn't calculate, and I think this is really wrong. She didn't calculate who got better, and judging from Mike Kelly. The, the people that get better, they get better in two weeks. So I was talking about this in the first segment. We had 55, and it's, it's written on that paper there, 45, excuse me. This 40, paper here? Yeah, 45 people sick on Good Friday. Now, with that, that means you're down to 15. Now... Taking the 60 that we had on the weekend and subtracting the 45 leaves 15. Now, there's five died, and that's a wild card. So you could be down to 10. But I threw that out. And I said, because of TV, mm -hmm. I said, well, what's the number we're going to be at Thursday? The number we're going to be at Thursday is 55. Now, the updated version says there's 63 in Lawrence County. In Lawrence place. County. That's just today. Okay. So 6355, the difference is eight. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about. So you feel that they're duping the numbers somehow? Yeah, it, do, it doesn't, because you can't. If I'm playing a basketball game, I can't take the, game, the points I scored in the last and say, well, these are extra, and I'll bring them into this game. Okay. Okay. So you have to account for people getting well, and then it shows you how the curve is going. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you feel that once a number is counted, that's how many cases there are, right? Right. And that number doesn't go down. Well, here's what they're doing. On these, um, on these numbers that they put out, when they put them out, they were only talking about total number of cases. Total cases, right? So and, a case count that... Yeah, and it right. was an ever-expanding case count. Right, so those, those cases would continue to go up. Right, and they never talked about who got better. Okay, so, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that is a thing. They, they just count the amount of cases... Right. And that brings the potentiality of further infection. So, right. So, like, for example, what they'll do is they'll use a number. Uh, let's say that number is five. Well, you know that if there's five reported cases, that there's X per X of cases that are gone unreported. So right. I don't know what that relative number is. Do you know? I, they don't know, and so, they're more interested in tracking right now ethnicity, so which... Fair. I think ethnicity has very little to do with it. Okay, I think what they really have to look at is we've had this many people get sick. This is the total number of people we've had get sick. This is the total number of people we've had get better or die. Mm -hmm. And is that number of people that are sick 
remaining constant or is it going down? If it's going down, you have less people getting sick. What um, these top numbers here? Nine plus one, two plus oh, one, whatever. Okay, uh, I did I did a track on two counties. Okay, because okay. Mercer and Lawrence County were both not getting anybody sick. I mean, um, they just weren't. And with that, do you think that's do you think that's because of the proactiveness of their government, or do you feel that that's just misreporting? What, how do you feel? What do you accredit those numbers to? The amount of distance. Um, Elwood City has a plant that, um, and Elwood City sits right on the Beaver Lawrence County line, and a good friend of mine that I went to school with. Uh, Dr. Larry Fazioli lived on one side of the street and my my cousin on the other and the line went down the middle of the street. Yeah. And he was in Lawrence and, and my cousin was in Beaver. Right. It was a long distance call to call each other back in the day. Now that being said, this plant that has specialty water, they drove into the hot spots where COVID was more rampant. And some of their people got sick from sources that I had. Did you get sick? Yeah. Down there. Did, has anybody I, you know? Nobody I know. I just, just the article of people that, again, they went into a hot spot, and that being New Orleans. Yeah. Okay, and then they came back and, and passed away. So it must be a hot... We, can, we could say it's dangerous. We could say it's highly contagious. We initially felt it's not airborne, and we got to believe it's not airborne, because I don't think you, a moose sneezes in Alaska and you go outside and catch... COVID-19, okay? With that being the case, you have to, according to the doctors that I've had on the show, virtually, you have to be in contact with somebody to get it. If you're not, and if you do the washing the hands, the hand sanitizer, Cook in the castle. This is, by the way, let me just say, this is the craziest experience for me so <laughs> far that I've ever had. For those of you that are watching, this is actually what's happening in the background. I have no idea where this city came from, but that is really there. Um, yeah. no, no, you were saying cook in the castle. I'm sorry to interrupt we, you. I am just, I, I am just enamored with this, with this situation. <laughs> this is awesome. I finally made it. I finally, <laughs> I finally made. It. I get to go on Angelo Ferrara's show. No, so you're. I'm so sorry. we made hand sanitizer. And we made if, it. Yeah, if there's a shortage, who's with what? We get the seventy percent alcohol. Isopropyl. Isopropyl, and aloe vera. You can use after sun or whatever mm -hmm. you like. Okay, and mix it with the alcohol and put it in a pump bottle, and there you have it. So it's a sanitizer. It is a, san that is that is true. With with that sanitizer, um, that sanitizer does it evaporate quickly or no? Does no, it, because I kept the I kept it in a lid and, and contained. I was okay. going to say, so one of the things about that, that type of sanitization is that you actually need a large amount of time for it to be on your hands. So like those, those hand sanitizers that make the claims 99 point something, something, yeah. something uh, uh, killing of, of uh, germs, what it actually is doing is it's actually destroying the membrane on the outside of a cell, and it's, it's basically just sucking all the water out of it, right? So what happens is you actually need time for that to happen. So if you have a hand sanitizer, let's say you just wipe your hands off like this and then you dry them immediately, 
it's not as effective as if you actually you leave it alone to, 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 right. to do that. Yeah. So things like that can actually work. Like it, actually, uh, uh, salt water um, has a has a similar thing. People that have tattoos, what they'll do to prevent infection is they'll put that like salt water brine on there, and that'll that'll actually help that. But yeah, that's that's definitely something. You know, Lysol, uh, Clorox, um, uh, UV light. Uh, actually does work, but again, these are all things that you have to expose it to for mass, right. large amounts See, of and I am in agreement with uh, building up an immunity. I think you have to be outside. Uh, uh, I, I think that... The uh, herd immunity? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, a, that's an interesting aspect of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, do want, you do want to build natural immunity. The problem is, is that all these people that are not immune to it that's that's the problem is that these these really really compromised people and i think that's i think that's where a lot of the disconnect lies between right. what people feel you know like obviously i want to go outside you want to go outside and, right. and uh to be honest with you i hate this like right. i absolutely i hate it but i you know i i just take it for what it's worth you know on a daily basis and, and just try and try and make the now, best of whatever i'm not going to make you fall off the chair but i gotta ask you a real serious question okay what do you think's going on in studio c where is studio c is this is right this there studio? cook in the castle Oh, we're doing a cook in the castle too. <laughs> what's in, what is what is in the what's in the crock pot? Tomorrow's cook in the castle will be sausage and peppers. Sausage is that, is that done here too? Sa sausage and potatoes, Italian sausage and potatoes. So, yeah, we've uh, we've done everything here. Yeah, that's that's all filmed here too. Yeah, this yeah. is this is a nice setup you have here. I mean, we didn't have. I have. You know that uh, the one room in my house, and that's it. Yeah, we kind my of cat. Room. I have my cat. You got, you got Angelo. <laughs> Angelo's he, doing all the work. He works for food. That's Angelo, good. is that the camera pan? No, uh, no. no. I, I was gonna say I'm doing a little should... thing with these, um, so I'm in the midst of a, an upgrade on okay. a car. Okay, we got. Uh, but we got to get to weather. Oh, you want me to you you sit here? Yeah, you just sit there. I'm just going to click yeah. this. What's the yeah? And I'll, can I tell the people what weather is going on? You, well, I already did when you were walking in, oh. so I'm just going to go to the weather shot. Here we it's go. sunny. That's that's the extent of it. And that's a good thing. It is. We'll be right back. BSB. Big Shot Bobs are the wings for me. 50 flavors make it right you see. BSB has sandwiches you have to try. Stop in and you'll know why. Every day of the week you see. Call or stop in to BSB. Big Shot Bobs will be your favorite place. Just like me. Easy clean car and van wash. Where your clean wash is our goal. shaping up well rain on the increase and uh, you can see it out there yes cloudy high of 60 that's the good news 50% chance of rain and that's why you know as I give you that Tuesday look a little bit earlier than I already do the national map showing a lot more as you can see rain all the way to our north northwest west just shaping in around us 
So let's take a look at that forecast. Yes, last night cloudy 44. Your Tuesday rain high of 60, chance of rain 50%. Rain on Tuesday night cloudy 51. Chance of precip 70%. Rain on Wednesday high of 66, chance of precip 100%. Wednesday night low of 51, chance of rain 90%. So you're getting the rain. Here comes Thursday. Showers, 59, 90% chance of rain. Thursday night, showers likely, mostly cloudy, 45, 70% chance of rain. As you get to Friday, mostly cloudy, 57, 50% chance of rain. Now, as you get to Friday night, you know, Thursday, you're getting that 70% chance get rain on Friday. Friday night, mostly cloudy, a low of 43. Now, those rain days are, like, real significant because we're going to get wet the whole time. Now, pull them back. Looking at Saturday, partly sunny and 67. Saturday night, mostly cloudy, a low of 51. Your Sunday. This is the Meza Mez day. You start out with sunshine. You gravitate into rain with a high of 69. Chance of the rain on Sunday is 50%. So uh, your temperatures, you're bouncing between the 60s, mid-60s, overnight lows, uh, mid to low 50s so uh, there you go Lawrence County 45 weather and uh, get used to it we're going to get some rain now we're going to take this break hear from these great sponsors including, including Tuscany, Tuscany Square. Square this, this was, was Lawrence County, County. surprise you just didn't realize it now um just a little thing uh their servers went down and uh but they're back up this is for labor and industry for those who are independent contractors they can apply for unemployment for the first time uh, and you know what? I uh, want to get to um, the Wolf administration. Uh, we've already talked about that. I don't know how data driven it was. And uh, but this is the reminders that I told you about. You know, 
storms brew up here at this time of the year and we had a problem oh about a few years take it easy Dan we'll Dan say bye to everybody at least like yeah, yeah, you were there. <laughs> Dan, we'll Dan's take it off. Hey, take it easy, Dan. Stay in touch. Thanks for having me on. We'll see you, Andrew. The PUC reminds you, and we talked about electric, and now we're going to talk about these other tips. Use a flashlight or battery-operated lanterns. Okay. Make sure you have a list. And when the lights go out, protect against surges and spikes by unplugging certain things. After you turn off the lights, um, it talks about using flashlights rather than uh, burning a candle. And also, um, electric power outages can affect home appliances that operate on natural gas, also be aware of that. If you smell natural gas, get everyone out of the building immediately. Leave the door open and do not uh, use phones, light switches, if you smell that gas. So remember, uh, that's uh, very, very important. And uh, we remind you of that. Now, um, we're going to be back with a wrap-up. I'm all full of surprises today in just 60 seconds. LGKG.com. This program sponsored by Lombardo's Apothecary, located at 1230 South Mill Street on the south side of Newcastle. Today's programming is brought to you by NCTV 45 and NC Radio 450, Newcastle's community television station. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for Nightly News Watch. I uh, hope you enjoyed my buddy uh, Dan stopping by. I want to say thank you to Ms. Lillian Betts for her kind, kind, kind hospitality and support. And uh, thanks to all of you for making NCTV 45 your community television station right here in what I call home. Now, um, before I bid you a farewell this evening, I want to say one thing. Make sure that you tell a friend and have a friend tell a friend about NCTV 45. They'll be glad you did. And when they say, oh, I don't watch a lot of TV, you tell them that NCTV 45 is available anytime on your time. Yes, a train that runs on your schedule, that's NCTV 45, right here. And make sure you get that second cup of coffee and have a super day in what I call the greatest castle in the world, in the County of Lawrence. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you again real soon. Oh, the illusion Got my ticket for the midnight plane And it's not easy